Great Lakes Prepping here. A couple weeks ago, I posted a video that it was all about making skillet flatbread. Well, in this video, we're gonna be making some skillet bread, but it's gonna be much thicker and fluffier. The kind of bread that you wanna dip in soup or stew, or just put some butter on it and eat it like that. There's a few steps, and there's a couple of things that you have to do just right for this to work as a skillet bread, but we're gonna go through all the steps, and we're gonna cook a really delicious, pretty looking loaf of bread in a skillet. Let's get started by taking a quick look at our ingredients. First, we've got flour, of course, water, olive oil, yeast, salt, sugar, and powdered milk. That's it. That's what you need for this fluffy skillet bread. So we're gonna get started mixing our ingredients together, getting the yeast proofing, and starting our dough. All right, we're gonna mix up our yeast and get it going. Uh, this calls for two teaspoons of yeast, two tablespoons of sugar, and we're putting that in three quarters of a cup of lukewarm water. And when I say lukewarm, I'm talking about uh, 95 to 100 degrees. You don't want it to be hotter than that or you're gonna kill the yeast. Colder than that, and it's not gonna activate the yeast as well. So we're gonna mix this up a bit, let this sit for about five minutes until it gets nice and foamy, and we'll get ready to mix up our uh, flour and our other ingredients. All right, this recipe calls for two cups of all-purpose flour, one half teaspoon of salt, and one tablespoon of powdered milk. If you don't have powdered milk, I really recommend picking some up. Sometimes you can't find it at the stores these days. I buy it online in a big uh, container, but it's really one of the key ingredients to this recipe. It makes the bread uh, help get fluffy in the frying pan. So we're gonna give our dry ingredients a little mix. All right, yeast has been proofing uh, for about nine or 10 minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and mix it into our dry mixture. I'm gonna mix it up pretty well with the fork. And the thing about this particular recipe is that the dough is gonna seem a little on the wet side. And the first few times that I made this, I really wanted to mix more flour into it to make it uh, a, a little more dry like a conventional bread dough. But I learned that you have to keep it a little bit wet for it to work because we're not baking this, we're cooking it in a skillet. So it's gonna seem a little sticky, a little bit uh, gummy maybe, but that's okay, just, just work with it. Now I will add a little flour to the countertop just so it won't stick to it, so I'll get a little more flour in there just by doing that, but I'm really trying not to add any significant amount of flour to what the recipe calls for. And the last ingredient I'm gonna add is one tablespoon of olive oil. And I'm gonna knead that right in. This is gonna help it not be so sticky, but it's sure gonna make it feel wetter. I'm just gonna knead this for about five minutes. If it feels like it wants to stick right to the countertop, I'll put a little more flour on the countertop, but that's it. Okay, I've got it formed into a ball, and I'm gonna put it back in the same bowl that I used to mix it initially. I'll drizzle it with just a little bit more olive oil, and just rub it around to make sure it's all coated. Get a little on the bottom. Just make sure it's coated all over, just a little bit. Now it's time to let the dough proof. So to do that, I'm gonna cover this bowl with saran wrap and then put the bowl in a warm place not especially warm just not cool I usually stick it in my oven not that the oven's been on lately but it keeps it out of any drafts and it's generally just a little bit warmer than room temperature and we're gonna let it sit in there for one hour a 
quick note about the kind of skillet that you're going to want to use. I'm using an 8 inch skillet with a very smooth bottom. It doesn't have any ridges or textures or, or anything like that. It's very smooth and it has a lid. It's all very important for making this bread turn out properly. You need a smooth surface and you don't want it too big because this pan is effectively going to be the mold for your bread. If you, uh, if you have a much larger frying pan, this particular recipe is going to have that dough flatten out much more and you're going to have a very thin uh, loaf of bread. If you have something much deeper than this, that could work, but you're going to have a harder time flipping that thing halfway through. I've tried this with a few different pans before. I just ended up getting this one. And, and I swear that the, the magic all comes from the pan you use. And I'll put a link to this exact pan in the description in case you, uh, you want to get the same thing. Okay, it's been an hour. As you can see, the dough has risen quite a bit. So what we're going to do next is knead it for just a couple more minutes. But first, since it's going to be going right into the pan, I'm going to coat the skillet with just a little bit of olive oil. Just sort of smeared around with a paper towel or a brush or something like that. Just a little bit enough to coat it. And I'm also going to do a little bit on the lid just in case that dough is pressed up against it as it rises in the pan. There we go. Just a little more flour on the counter. Just gonna need this for, say, two minutes. Again, this is uh, it's kind of wet at this point. It's kind of oily. It's just a little bit sticky. That's okay. That's what we're going for. I'm gonna put this in the pan and just sort of gently. Shape it out till it's about the diameter of the pan. Not trying to squish it, just sort of spread it a little bit. Okay, now we're putting the lid on and we're gonna stick this back in the turned off oven for 15 more minutes. Okay, dough has risen a little bit again and we're getting ready to cook it. Now because we don't want direct flame on the bottom of this pan, what we're gonna actually do is take a cast iron skillet, turn it upside down over the burner, just to give us a little bit of a buffer. So the flames will heat the cast iron and the cast iron will heat our skillet with the bread dough. It just helps it keep it from burning and it's gonna give it more of an even heat. So what we want is a medium low flame, Probably a, just a little more than halfway up. Something like about that. So I'll leave this skillet in place here and just let it heat up for just a few minutes, maybe three or four minutes, and then we're cooking bread. Okay, our cast iron is pretty well heated up. I'm gonna go ahead and just set the skillet with the bread right on top. We're gonna let this cook for 10 minutes on this side, flip it, and then do five minutes on that side. All right, now it's been cooking on that first side for just about five minutes, and I wanted to give you a quick look at how, it, how it's looking so far. You can see that the bread is starting to expand a bit, and it's actually pressing into the glass lid. That's why it's important to put a little bit of oil on, the, on that lid so when we pull it off, it's not going to all stick to it. Five more minutes, and then we'll flip it. All right, it's been ten minutes. We're going to carefully take this lid off. Wow, that looks awesome. Okay, lid back on. See, we got a little bit of dough stuck to it, that's okay. Lid back on for five more minutes. Okay, it's been five more minutes and now we're just gonna turn the heat off, remove the pan from the stove. 
So now what we want to do is take the lid off and cover this with a towel. Cover the whole pan with a towel and just let it sit. You're going to let it cool, but it's also going to continue cooking a little bit, especially on the bottom there as this pan cools down. So we're going to leave this just like this until it's cool enough to cut, probably about 25, 30 minutes. And we'll come back there. Okay, this has been sitting here about half an hour. Still a little warm to the touch, but it's it's not hot by any means. Let's see if it'll just fall right out of that pan. That's pretty looking. Now, even though we started with uh, this is the bottom, um, I feel like it makes more sense as the top now that it's finished. It's nice and golden brown all the way around, not burnt. Nice and soft and squishy. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this open and see what we got. Look at that. That looks that looks good. The thing about this this kind of bread, it's 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 a bit more spongy than bread that you bake in the oven. And uh, and it's a little bit a little bit oily to the touch because of that olive oil that we had to add. But it's just good, soft bread. It's great, like I said, for dipping in soup. That's my favorite thing to eat it with. But it's also really good to just sort of slice up and put some butter on. I'm really happy with how this one came out. It's one of my best ones yet. And uh, it's, it's really just kind of fun to make and it just looks so pretty. So that's it. That's my fluffy skillet bread. Delicious, soft, spongy. What more can you ask for? Hey, if you liked the video, click the subscribe button and stay up to date on all of our latest videos. Also, check out our blog at greatlakesprepping.com and our Facebook page. Thanks again for watching. I can't tell you how much it means to me that you guys all watch the videos, subscribe, comment, reach out to me, share stuff on Facebook. It really makes me feel good and I appreciate it. That's it for now. Until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping.